So the American Medical Association, the AMA, and I don't always agree with them, but they have their annual meeting. Um, it's called the um, House of Delegates meeting. It's every June, and they discuss you know, major issues. Now, one of these I thought was very useful, and that is um, they discussed children's mental health. And uh, the AMA declared that children's mental health in the United States currently constitutes an emergency. And I would certainly agree with this. Now, they're quoting data that was actually from before the pandemic. But I would argue that during the pandemic, things got a lot worse. I mean, children um, developed a lot of um, anxiety, depression, and so on. Um, here, though, they're saying that in a 2022 study that was published in JAMA Pediatrics, the authors found that from 2016 to 2020, so four years right before the pandemic hit, childhood anxiety and depression increased significantly. And that was actually very profound. At the same time, preventive medical visits decreased. Now, we can talk about what preventive medical visits mean. It's, you know, we can have our disagreements there. But I think parents need to be aware of this. Teachers need to be aware of this. You know, we have to understand that children today, I think, are exposed to many things that predispose them to depression much more than I would say 10, 15 years ago. I think this, these things have changed and it's very, very uh, tragic sometimes. So um, the AMA found that one in five children in the United States experiences a mental health disorder each year, one in five. But furthermore, there was a uh, 2021 um, <clears throat> uh, publication by the CDC that showed that uh, suicide was the second leading cause of death among children 10 to 14 years of age. And that just broke my heart. So when I read that um, children, 10 to 14 years, suicide is their second leading cause of death. How you know, uh, distraught and how you know, hopeless does a child have to feel to go to, go to these extremes? You know? And it is just a horrible, horrible thing to realize. And I think it's important for parents and teachers to realize this. Um, these numbers are a lot higher than, than it was you know, 10, 15 years ago or so. This is a big concern. I think this is really a uh, public health crisis, if you ask me. <clears throat> now, the AMA found that um, you know, they feel that physicians and mental health professionals need to be trained more. We need to have more availability. That means more visits of children and we need to have more screening in medical offices. <clears throat> With then possibly the intervention, I suppose, would be you know, therapy and medications. I don't necessarily agree with that that is the most important thing here. You know, To be honest with you, the screening should happen already at home. You know, I mean, parents need to be more aware of the mental health of their children. You know, we need to understand that, you know, um, sometimes depression in children manifests differently than in grown-ups. You know, they cannot really verbalize it very well, and a lot of times depression manifests as anger, for example, acting out, right? And we're thinking, oh, the child is being difficult. The child is being moody. Maybe it's just a normal early teenage behavior. But a lot of times, these are actually mood disorders. This might be depression. And it's hard to distinguish this, to be honest with you. But I think we should really be um, encouraging, you know, um, you know, kind of conversation with children. So again, I don't think that, you know, necessarily pushing everything to physicians and healthcare and um, having more, uh, um, you know, medications and so is the only solution here. I think it, it could be part of it, of course, you know, and it has its place, I believe. But more so is really the understanding of, you know, uh, observing children and seeing, you know, if there's any changes in their behavior, if they're um, sleeping longer, if they're isolating themselves from their friends, if they are, you know, falling behind in school. Is it just a learning thing or is there some emotional thing going on that we can address? And um, it's a different world now. So when we were growing up, the problems were different, I would argue, than we have today. And part of that is the Internet. Part of that is social media. And I think social media and every kid today, I would say, is at, at least knows about it. And many of them that have a device are on it. There's TikTok, there's YouTube, you know, there's uh, uh, Instagram, there's all these things. And it could be fun, it could be great, they can communicate these ways, there's no question. But also it can lead to problems that can cause severe um, mood changes in children. And I've observed it in my children as well. So if they even, let's say, they're texting in like a group chat and children don't know this, uh, but you know, as soon as one person might say something that's inappropriate or something that might be misconstrued as something that is, you know, uh, uh, this is a bad joke, this is sexist, this is racist or whatever else, you know what I mean? And this really um, turns sometimes into cyber bullying where then other kids bully this child and this child without really having any bad intent can become extremely depressed about this. So for them, the whole world is falling apart when their classmates or their friends are criticizing them or are you know, calling them out on something that they said, 
even inadvertently, even maybe it was just some stupid joke they didn't even understand, right? <clears throat> These children take this to heart. And um, this is one of the things that can lead to severe depression and, again, suicidal behavior. Another thing that I had to learn about, and I read an article about this today, is something called sexting. I had no idea what that was. But apparently, there's this trend amongst younger people to send to each other uh, a nude picture sometimes, you know what I mean? And this is probably more for you know, teenagers and young adults in their 20s, maybe. But still, I think there's a big uh, concern there. And there is a current study, uh, sorry, a current case where this led to a suicide of a, of a young man. And the way this works sometimes, I guess they talked about here, there was a scheme of, um, you know, young men being coerced sort of by uh, someone befriends them um, under a fake account or under a hacked account. Um, and they start sending nude pictures and ask the person to send nude pictures back, right? And if, as soon as they do that, there is this extortion scheme where they say, well, now we have your pictures unless you pay X amount of money, you know, uh, we're going to publish these everywhere. So there's blackmail. <clears throat> and again, for young people, the whole world is falling apart. You know, they're embarrassed about this. A lot of times they can't tell anybody. They're too embarrassed to tell their parents about it. And in this one case, this young man actually committed suicide. And I think we just need to be aware that this is a thing now. I didn't know this was until you know I read about this, but I think it's very important to understand. And even though my children are a bit too young to, or hopefully too young to do anything like that, I think it's important to talk to them about it, to understand whatever you put out on the internet or on chat rooms or in, in group chats, um, you know, don't write anything that could be misconstrued as something hurtful to someone else, as something that can be derogatory in any way, and certainly nothing that contains nudity. Even if someone sends you something inappropriate, don't sink to that level. I think it's wrong on many, many levels, you know. I think it's really a terrible and uh, morally wrong behavior to do stuff like that. I think this is just uh, stupid and dumb. Uh, and as a grown-up, you know, uh, people, we can laugh about it and, and, and think it's funny. But for them, for children, you know, their whole world can fall apart. It can trigger them to uh, fall into this really depressed mood, and it can certainly contribute to suicidal ideation. And again, this is something that we as adults need to understand. We have to see that this is a different world, that there's different risks out there for children. So again, I was very shocked to understand that the second leading cause of death among children 10 to 14 years old is suicide. I think whatever we can do to have conversations with, with our children and also um, for our teachers to talk to children. And we have the school we go to, I think the teachers are wonderful and they're very caring. They also have a lot of children in their class. There's 30 plus uh, kids, you know, public school system. And um, it's sometimes hard to identify an individual child that has problems, but they're doing, I think, a great job and they're trying very hard. So anyway, in schools and also at home, these are the points, I think, where we have to really focus on. Then, of course, having extra support during a doctor's visit, great. But my opinion is this. In a short visit, how long, how much time do you spend with your pediatrician? You know, I mean, again, in an ideal world, we would have an hour to talk and go through all the uh, social, um, you know, intake and, and everything, how's things at home and so on. That hardly happens. You know, you're in there for five to ten minutes. For a child to build a trust relationship to an authority figure like a physician, that is very difficult to do in that short time frame. So I wouldn't put all the burden on those visits. You know, I think it's very difficult actually for the child to open up there. So at home and in school, I think that the number one things. Anyway, so that was one very important point. I think that was discussed by the American Medical Association in this June meeting. Um, and I think it's worth thinking about.